panic shot through Clay and he sped up, flapping his wings frantically. Glory soared up beside him. Stop! She whispered. If we run, they'll know we're looking for something wrong. Clay knew she was right, but it was almost impossibly hard to swing around and fly back toward the Mudwing village, and the voice that had called after them. Five dragons were hovering in the sky, watching them intently. As they drew close together, Clay realized that they were dragonettes, not yet full grown. The biggest one was a bit smaller than Clay, with warm golden amber eyes and a recent claw mark wound on his tail. The smallest was the dragon with the patch on his nose, who had stared at Clay in the village. Hey, Clay said to them. He hoped he sounded casual and non-threatening. We were just leaving. The mudwing dragonettes glanced at each other. The biggest one said, We heard you were asking about a blood egg and from one cattail's hatchings. That's right, Glory said. Do you know what happened to it? The smallest mudwing blurted. Did it hatch? Who came out? Where's the dragonette? Glory poked Clay with her tail before he could respond. Who's asking? I'm Reed, said the biggest dragonette. This is Sora, Pheasant, Marsh, and Umber. The smallest one, Umber, had his eyes fixed on Clay again. The other three kept checking the sky with nervous expressions. I'm Clay, and this is Glory, Clay answered. Pheasant tilted her head at Glory. That's not a normal mudwing name, she said. Oops. I didn't choose it, Glory said with a shrug that lifted her up and down in the air currents. Did one of you hatch from the blood egg? Asked Reed. Are you our missing Sib? Sib! Clay said suddenly. Siblings! That's what everyone keeps talking about! He launched himself forward and gripped Reed's front talons. Is that what you mean? Were we in the same hatching? I knew it! Umber yelped. I knew he had a familiar feeling. I told you! He bundled into Marsh and nearly knocked them both out of the air. You're our brother! Reed said with a grin that warmed Clay to the tips of his claws. You should have been with us all along. He's not just our brother, Pheasant pointed out. Look at him. He should be our big wings. The grin faded from Reed's face as he studied Clay from wingtips to talons. That's true, he said. Clay wanted to bring that grin back. He didn't understand what was wrong. He pointed to a clear island in the marshes below. Let's talk, he said. His brothers and sisters couldn't believe how little he knew about mudwing life, but they were happy to explain it all to him, their words tumbling over one another. The five of them coiled together naturally in the tall grass, tails and talons and wings entwined, with Umber climbing up on their backs and standing on heads to make himself heard. They told him that mudwing dragons laid their eggs in warm mud nests protected by walls of hot rocks. They were so safe that the mother never needed to check on them, and the dragonettes were usually born when she wasn't even there. The firstborn was always the biggest, and his or her first task was to help the other dragonettes out of their eggs by cracking their shells from the outside. As they came to this part of the explanation, Glory gasped. She turned to Clay. That's what it was, she said. When we hatched, the guardians didn't know anything about mudwings, so they thought you were attacking us. But you were trying to help. Your instincts told you to get the rest of us out of our shells. Clay, you know what this means? You weren't trying to kill us at all. Clay felt like he was filling up with warm summer clouds. Kestrel was wrong, all wrong about him, and she always had been. His strength wasn't for killing or violence, it was for protecting his brothers and sisters. He wasn't destined to be a monster, he wasn't a killer deep inside somewhere. He was a big wings. He crossed his tail over Glories and smiled at her, too happy to speak. So from then on, the big wings take care of the, all the others, Pheasant said, nudging Reed with affection. Some of them can be pretty bossy or too weak, but we got a good one. She stopped, realizing what she had said. I, I mean, you would have been good too, I'm sure. Reed tugged a clump of marsh grass and started shredding it without looking at Clay. And then we all stick together, he said. For always. We learn to hunt and survive together. We grow up together. And we live together for the rest of our lives. And when we're at war, we all fight as a group. Every mudwing troop is a hatching of siblings, except for the ones who've lost too many, and then they try to find unsibs to form a new troop with. Pheasant glanced around at the others, wriggling Umber, Silent Sora, nervous twitching Marsh, as if she would rather die than replace them with unsibs who weren't her own brothers and sisters. How many of you have we lost? Clay asked. Two. You and our sister Crane, two days ago in the battle by the cliff. 
He nodded in the direction of the waterfall. Clay's insights twisted as he realized one of the dead bodies he had flown over had been his own sister. That was our first battle, Sora said softly. It was awful, Umber added. Reed sighed heavily. I was not the big wings I wanted to be. You were! The others all protested at once. You were amazing, Reed, Pheasant said firmly. We'd all be dead if it weren't for you, Marsh agreed. They all had the same expression as they looked to Reed. Clay could see it was trust, faith that their big wings would take care of them, no matter what happened. But it's all right now, because you're back, and you should be your big wings. He glanced sidelong at Clay, and in his amber eyes, Clay could see all the worries he'd ever felt himself. All the fear for his friends, all the things he had done and would do to protect them, all the ferocity of how much he cared about them. Clay cared about his real brothers and sisters too, although he only just met them. He felt instinctively like they were extensions of his own claws and wings. This was the family he'd always wanted. And if he stayed, it would tear them apart. He could see it in their eyes. They wanted him and were afraid of him at the same time. If he became their big wings, what would happen to their loyalty to Reed? What would happen if Reed himself, forced to follow him but desperate to protect them in his own way? Clay didn't know anything about mudwing life or troop formations or even how to hunt in a swamp. How could he lead them into battle? It would never be like the closeness they had with Reed, no matter how hard they all tried. There was only one way to protect his siblings, he realized. If he really was their big wings, he had to leave them and leave Reed as their big wings, the way he'd always been. He would keep them safe better than Clay ever could, and their sibs would not be forced to choose between them. Glory would look at him too. Clay shook his head. No, he said to his brothers and sisters. Reed is your big wings. You trust him and you need him. I couldn't replace him even if I tried. His brother raised his head, pride warring with the disbelief on his face. The other Dragonex looked relieved and sad at the same time. Besides, Glory said, he can't stay with you. He's our big wings. He brushed Clay's wings with hers. He was glad he couldn't change colors like her, or he felt like he might have turned crimson from nose to tail. Are you sure? Reed said to Clay. You could still join us, big wings or not. There's more fighting ahead, and we could always use another strong dragon at our side. Clay was tempted. He wanted to know his brothers and sisters, and so it would be easy to slip into this life and become a warrior, with no prophecies to worry about and no angry sandwing queens hunting him. But he remembered the charred corpses on the battlefield. And he thought about his friends and how they'd try to go on without him. I'm afraid I have a destiny, he said ruefully. We're going to try to stop the war. Umber's eyes went wide. Like the prophecy? That's you? Pheasant looked at Glory doubtfully. That's us, Clay said, touching Glory's talon. Apparently, Glory added. More or less. We'll try anyway, Clay said. But maybe after that, once the war is over, maybe then I could come back? You're one of us, Reed said. You can come back any time. I hope you do, Umber said. The others nodded. Clay looked from face to face, wondering how many of his brothers and sisters would survive the next battle. He wondered if he could stop the war in time to save them all.